Have you ever heard of Mesh Tastic? Neither is Lee. So I have some LoRa boards which have flashed some Mesh Tastic firmware onto them, and we're going to try and show you what they do. So we're going to boot these up, we're going to connect to them with the phones, and I'll screen record so you can see what we're doing. And we're just going to try sit next to each other to try and send messages between us. And then if that works okay, we'll head out into the wide blue yonder and see if we can get any good distances. Yes. Sound like a plan? Pew, pew. All right. So plug it in. A little USB-C on the end. And then, so that's, yep, so that's coming up, mesh tastic, that's all good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my phone onto airplane mode and leave Bluetooth switch back on again. And then I will screen record. Three, two, one, oh, that's not like that. That's fine, because I can edit that. Get rid of all my many apps. Okay, so we're screen recording. Do you want to grab your phone? You can't grab your phone, because it's over there. How are we going to test if there's a message come in? It'll come in on here. It will come in on there, that's a good point. So I'm going to open the MeshTastic software. It should automatically connect, because I've already connected to this device before. That's all good. And we're going to go into Messages down the bottom left. And we're going to do Direct Messages to MeshTastic A098, which is that one. And it should come up in his display when I send him a message. So let's click on that. Send. Hey, there it is. And I've got an acknowledged message on me. You uh, can't send anything back, though, can you? Uh, no, unless it's voice commands. No, not on that, it's not voice command. So I think what we'll do is we'll head outside and we're going to go and find somewhere nice and scenic and we'll try and do this. And a straight. Bit distance. Yeah, because it's meant to be line of sight communication. Um, and we'll see what happens. So we're at the first car park, Lee's Park just up there. We're going to do a test here. Then I'm going to drive that way. He's going to stay here, possibly walk up to the top of the hill and we'll get further and further away with each test. We'll put on screen how far away we are, and we'll uh, let you know how we get on. All right, so I'm one car park away from the All right, so in car park number two, we're going to try another test. All righty, car park number three. A little bit lower down this time. Hopefully the hill won't get in the way. We'll see if we can get the messages. Six hundred meters since the last car park, so no idea if this is going to work or not. Please, way on a hill, way up over there. We'll give it a try.
as you can see, at the two kilometer mark, we're getting the first message through without any problem. And then after that, the messages are not going through. The LoRa device was on the ground at this point, and I thought, okay, let's head over to the coast a little bit more, back to the ocean, and see if that helps. Put it up on a fence post about a meter high, and at that point, the messages started going through. So I think at the two kilometer mark, we're reaching the limits of what it's capable of. So I think at some point in the future, we'll try different settings, having done a bit more research, and see where we go from there. So this has been our first foray into Meshtastic or LoRa devices. Most of the information I've gotten has been from a guy called Andy Kirby in the UK. He's been a fantastic font of knowledge for me, which is one of the reasons I bought the gear in the first place. Uh, I'd like to do a bit more, maybe get a T-Beam device. I like the idea of the E8 displays and I like the idea of solar powered things on the roof. We have a lot of solar energy in Australia, so anything solar powered, we're going to be in for that. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you in the next one.